Hi, uh, welcome back. Up next, we have Partha from ARP and Dodd Pfeiffer from VMware. Um, they're going to be talking about how Spring Cloud Gateway orchest orchestrated our app modernization. Both are ready. Feel free and take it away. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, and this session, we'll, we will be talking about how Spring Cloud Gateway orchestrated our app modernization. Uh, my name is Partha Chandramohan. I work as a solutions architect at AARP uh, within a group called Digital Strategy and Membership. And with me is Dot Piffer. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Um, so I'm a, a solutions engineer at VMware, and that has me working with customers at various stages along their application modernization journey. I, I'm super excited to be here, particularly presenting for two reasons. One is I've spent over 10 years of my career working with the ARP Health Program um, and getting to really understand the, uh, the way ARP values their membership and the connection that they have uh, with their membership base. Uh, additionally, because three years ago at this very same conference, I met Partha as he and his coworker Kishore came to the Pivotal booth after attending the great sessions on Spring and the ecosystem and seeing how much of a, an impact a platform like Cloud Foundry could have as they were looking at their modernization journey. So it's great three years later to be here with Partha and then tell the story of uh, their modernization efforts. Partha, back to you. Thank you, Dad, and thanks for that intro. Uh, with that, uh, I would uh, like to give a brief introduction about our organization. Uh, many of you might have uh, heard about AARP, uh, you might have noticed it in your TV advertisements or reference in the pop culture like movies and TV shows and whatnot. Um, to properly introduce AARP, AARP is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that empowers people to choose how they live as they age. Uh, and we've been around since 1958. Uh, we serve more than 40 million members today. Uh, we actively advocate for healthcare, social security, health insurances, and other such uh, benefits on behalf of our members. Uh, we also provide many other discounts and benefits. That being said, uh, within the organization, the brand, the value it uh, gets to the member, uh, and how we project ourselves is of a very key importance. Um, so uh, that actually means a lot for our members too, and our members trust us uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, a small introduction about the group that I work for. Uh, it's called DSM in short, and the longer form is Digital Strategy and Membership. Uh, and this group actually looks after the, uh, the digital uh, channels of AARP, and we primarily focus on um, the technology and the product around the uh, web and the mobile app. Uh, the website uh, we host and run is called AARP.org, and there is a native uh, mobile application on both iOS and uh, Android. It's called ARP Now. Uh, the web is much more comprehensive. It has a, a slew of content uh, that helps our members uh, and also a catalog of our member benefits uh, and the products that we offer, uh, along with the ability to transact uh, or purchase the uh, uh, membership online. Uh, the app is more catered towards uh, uh, more at a personal level, uh, to geolocation uh, uh, level. So basically, when the users are on the move, um, they get to know uh, what's near them that will help them uh, as part of the ARP benefit. Uh, and our benefit catalog is pretty elaborate. Uh, so that being said, uh, our technology uh, platform has been there for decades. Uh, and uh, as Dad mentioned in the uh, introductory note, three years ago when we met uh, in the spring conference, uh, we were looking for a specific solution as our organization was taking a different structure and the, uh, the vision from our leadership was to uh, more, much more agile, uh, get to the market faster and help other business units to realize their uh, vision uh, in an effective way. Um, with that being said, uh, a, a, a small context in here about our legacy setup. Uh, we went into... Uh, AWS uh, infrastructure from our data center infrastructure like in early 2014. Uh, at that point of time, uh, our strategy was to just move applications from uh, data center into uh, uh, AWS. 
with, with that being said, eventually we did modify to a specific, uh, a slightly modified version of the data center version. Uh, but however, the applications that we built uh, were decades old. Uh, it, it, uh, it was running on uh, older uh, uh, frameworks like struts and earlier version of Spring and earlier version of Hibernate and stuff like that. Uh, though the uh, the home brew infrastructure that we built had some benefits over our data center, uh, it had auto scaling, but not auto scaling in a meaningful way. Uh, it was able to auto scale based on memory and uh, CPU usage, but uh, that was not really the case. What we found out in the future that more of our uh, auto scaling was required based on the incoming traffic. Uh, to give you a little more of a context in terms of traffic, uh, our marketing team runs a constant marketing campaign uh, every week, uh, three days a week, uh, with throttling about 150,000. Um, targeted leads on, on an hourly basis. So that means like uh, we get constant number of traffic uh, without fail. So uh, availability of our system and services of uh, key importance. So 100% availability is expected from us and our team uh, tries hard along with our web operations team to achieve that goal. Um, so that being said, uh, we did not have a proper gateway. We did not have a way to throttle uh, traffic uh, as needed. Uh, this might have come in handy in certain cases when you know someone trying to abuse our services uh, from the uh, infrastructure point of view. And we didn't have a way to route the traffic based on some certain rules. Um, so for us to move forward to the next step, uh, what we were looking for is, again, uh, from a context of money spent in terms of uh, marketing, uh, there is revenue impact in terms of there is a downtime, and there is also a revenue impact in terms of conversion of our membership transactions. So uh, we get about a couple thousand uh, membership uh, transactions in a day. Uh, these are paid transactions, so we cannot lose transactions at all. Uh, the solution that we uh, were looking for at that point of time was to uh, modernize some of our monolith application. Again, th those were built a decade ago to a meaningful uh, microservices on a uh, newer platform uh, and gradually uh, without impacting the current infrastructure and matrices and the uh, the current state. So uh, I, I keep on highlighting on the availability here, our application metrics uh, revolve around those availability and successful transactions and you're able to throttle traffic slowly into new applications incrementally uh, without impacting the older uh, infrastructure as well as the transactions going through the older uh, infrastructure. So the idea is to keep both legacy and the new infrastructure, new applications al alive uh, to the uh, uh, production at the same point of time and slowly uh, put them into uh, a, a much more higher uh, volume of traffic. Um, so that... Uh, yeah, th this is... Uh, right around th this point, as um, Arapi has made a decision to go along with the modernization, um, they started working with the Tanzu Labs organization. And Tanzu Labs can help and, and did help ARP both in, in standing up Cloud Foundry, but also analyzing this legacy portfolio um, and being able to um, provide the um, quick accelerations in how and what sequence of steps they could use in order to bring those services onto the new platform. So I came down in advance of that to work with Partha to do what's, what's called the portfolio analysis and cataloging and do lightweight analysis in a process that we called SNAP. This allowed us to take those uh, or identify the 18 to 20 services they have, uh, determine key characteristics of those services that made um, either identified them as being similar with each other or, or different and then we ran an automated code scan against the code base that could identify um, key aspects of complexity as we look to uh, either break apart those services or, or bring them directly over onto the, the application platform. Um, with this uh, quick analysis done up front, we provided that as input to the Tanzu Labs team who was able to work with uh, Parthas team and ARP to get them started quickly and, and set up the patterns for the remaining services. It's along that process that they identified Spring Cloud Gateway as a key component that would help them with the uh, traffic route, routing and shaping. And thank you, Dad. And uh, on that note, uh, the the journey for our modernization took a year long. And again, uh, and that was 
uh, reasonable in a way that uh, we had to migrate about 30 applications and some of them were monoliths and we were breaking them into multiple microservices. Uh, it was of uh, great help uh, working with the uh, Tanzu uh, labs team to come up with that strategy to uh, peel them off slowly. Um, uh, next, oops. Um, and we came up with this strategy as part of that exercise. And uh, and some of the points that you see here is uh, breaking down um, one of the application. And uh, uh, it is it is a key piece of our modernization effort. Uh, uh, and part of the reason is, again, uh, to uh, scale and meet the traffic needs and also uh, make sure our transactions are going 100% through. Um, and the way we peeled off of these monoliths is by endpoint. So we peeled off one endpoint at a time. Uh, so any and all functionalities that was working as part of that particular uh, endpoint was migrated out as a microservice. Uh, and when the microservice was uh, um, set and uh, was ready to go live, uh, we did not uh, put that uh, to have 100% traffic uh, in the get-go. So what we initially did is we actually routed off traffic uh, to both the legacy and the new service, starting off with 20% of the traffic going into legacy, sorry, 20% of the traffic going into the newer modernized application and the 80% going into legacy. And this was a, a key feature of uh, 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 Spring Cloud Gateway and the Spring Cloud Gateway was extremely handy in terms of testing these out and peeling this traffic out to the newer services as well as the legacy services at the same point of time. Um, and this helped us to give us a way to roll back if in an event there was an issue with the newer modernized application. Uh, the kind of things that we're looking for and what we did with the Spring Cloud Gateway is to, uh, is A-B testing is one part, uh, traffic splitting is the other part, and the uh, rules based on header values is the, uh, the next part. And let me give you a, uh, give you a brief example of uh, why and how and what has to be done for us to uh, peel these uh, services off. Uh, as I mentioned before, we peeled off uh, endpoint by endpoint. Uh, what that means is uh, an identical set of functionalities uh, in two different platform and infrastructure, a brand new code and a legacy code. A legacy code has a already defined metrics and also met some success metrics already. Uh, and that was a benchmark for us for the newer uh, app to meet. Uh, for us to uh, do that, the A-B testing was the best way and we used uh, Sprint Cloud Gate, Gate way to do that. And uh, and we were able to measure both the uh, performances at the same time. Uh, and also uh, while the, the traffic splitting is the other aspect of the same thing, uh, with the 50% traffic split to either way, we were able to measure the load and the capacity of this infrastructure on, on the both sides. Um, so either the uh, the newer infrastructure should be on par with the legacy or about the legacy and cannot uh, go down. In an event it does, uh, um, the Spring Cloud Gateway gave us a way to roll it back quickly to route all the traffic back into legacy uh, while we address the issue on and identifying what, what's going on in the newer infrastructure. The last point is something that I will talk in the next slide. Uh, it's for our blue-green deployment, and that that's where the header values comes into play. Um, so, Partha, um, I happen to know you're one of the the very early adopters of Spring Cloud Gateway, um, and and you used it in earnest, right? With with all of the the the, the features that were available at the time, and and even drove drove some uh, feature requests along the way. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the relationship you had with the R&D team that builds both the open source and uh, commercial versions of the gateway? Of course, yes. Um, so on a high level, when we evaluated uh, Spring Cloud Gateway, uh, it seems like the perfect tool and it, you know, nothing could go wrong, right? Uh, and uh, and it, it wasn't wrong at all in many aspects of it. It was the right choice for us to go through and the choice of uh, Spring Cloud Gateway. However, it's not uh, a complete smooth path. Uh, so the devils are always in the details, as everyone knows in in here, right? Uh, what we found after implementing and going live is that in certain uh, cases, the Cloud Gateway wasn't able to uh, route the request, uh, which had a little more uh, uh, higher size on the normal default value. The default value was 10K. Uh, 
uh, for the default the, the setup. And uh, if it's if it crosses the threshold of 10k uh, head of value, um, it failed. And uh, we put in a request to the product team, uh, and they saw the value in our request, and they actually created a patch for us and uh, and released as part of the product feature. Now uh, we will be able to um, configure the uh, the header size as needed as per the requirement. You can keep it low, you can keep it uh, higher as you as you will you know deem. Um, the other one is uh, another interesting issue that we spotted as part of the migration of these applications into uh, Tanzu Cloud Foundry is that uh, uh, the Cloud Gateway uh, did not allow us to disable any security headers. And we did not need to have to do this in our moment because the Cloud Gateway was much under the, uh, the secure zone. Uh, it wasn't uh, taking on the user traffic straight away from the uh, uh, the load balancers or, or the uh, DNS. Yeah, so uh, we had like multiple layers of security on top of it. In this particular case, uh, we did not need to have the uh, secure headers enabled. And uh, when we put in a request to the product team, uh, they saw the value with our request again uh, and uh, provided with a with a, a patch and rolled it as a, a product feature. Now we will be able to uh, disable security headers as needed. Um, so that, that those were some of the things that we uh, had to work with the uh, product team, and it was a very uh, pleasant experience for us. Uh, so I'll be talking a little bit about uh, blue-green deployments. Uh, and this is one of our requirements that we had uh, along with the modernization effort. Um, to give you a uh, idea of like what our legacy uh, uh, application infrastructure had to deal with as part of deployment is that uh, it was a uh, canary or a rolling fashion deploy in our legacy, uh, which means uh, the artifacts will be QA'd, tested, uh, or, uh, and then like it will be deployed to production on a rolling fashion. Um, and uh, and that, that it goes. And sometimes uh, it's hard to predict some of those uh, issues that we find only in production. And when those things occur, uh, the only way for us to uh, roll back is to redeploy the older artifact uh, to the uh, infrastructure, uh, which was taking live traffic. Um, the downside of that approach is, again, users were impacted, lost transactions, lost revenue, and whatnot. Uh, it, it was problematic, uh, and our our deployments were nightmares for us. So basically, we'll be sitting all night and do, doing those deploys. So in order to get out of that nightmare, uh, we chose to have blue-green deployments as part of Tangent Law Foundry. Um, this has changed our lives a lot to better uh, state, if you will. Uh, so basically, we have uh, two identical spaces in production. One's called blue, one's called green. And in our nomenclature, we call it current and the future. Uh, what we do here is uh, uh, we will be uh, routing, I mean, in the sense, deploying all the newer codes into the uh, future space, uh, do the smoke and regression and everything uh, beforehand, and then use Plunk Cloud Gateway to uh, route the traffic into the uh, newer, pro newer space, the future space, and make it current and make the current space future. Uh, it might be a little bit of a help if I show uh, the uh, the configurations here a little bit. So here is our uh, sample version of uh, Spring Cloud Gateway configuration, and the top two lines there, uh, number uh, line number two and line number three, uh, will show you the new features that uh, we made a request for, and the team has rolled out for us. Is this uh, disable secure headers? Uh, the default value is false, and you will be able to uh, uh, flip it. Uh, by this configuration. The MAC header size, max header size is again, uh, 10K is the default one. Uh, and at here, we'll be able to set whatever limit that we uh, deem fit. Um, if you see here, the first two routes, uh, and, uh, and just a quick note, the secure header uh, can be enabled at the uh, route level as well. Uh, so if you see these two routes here, the route to app one is a predicate uh, is where that is being sent. And anything that comes as this particular request goes to this application. Uh, and it, when it does, it also sets a filter to the response header uh, as X system current. And uh, in this particular case, uh, if it's the same URL and if it has a cookie called XARP system future, uh, 
and if that is true, what we do is uh, we send it to the future application. Again, in that particular case, we do set a response header as a system future. What that means is, uh, this this is a way for us to know which application it's hitting, uh, and we will we'll, we will be able to see that on the uh, the developer console on the browser. Um, so that's how uh, we perform our uh, blue green deployment. Uh, and similarly, like uh, every every application will have two routes in our setup, um, and that will help us to deploy applications to our future and the current uh, uh, spaces. Uh, so here is the overview of our current setup. Uh, it's a much abstract view, uh, nothing in detail. Uh, so we have a web proxy in front of uh, Cloud uh, Spring Cloud Gateway, and Spring Cloud Gateway will determine to route either to our legacy platform or to the Tanzu platform. Uh, it's that simple. Uh, again, um, uh, the, uh, the 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 enablement that uh, Spring Cloud Gateway provided us is. Uh, multifold. One is again the splitting of traffic between uh, two different platforms, testing out uh, uh, the performances of these applications and doing A/B testing and comparing them uh, in terms of performances and uh, stability. Uh, eventually, throttling them as needed, uh, and also provide blue-green deployment. Um, so, is Spring Cloud Gateway a better tool? Uh, from my perspective, it is. Um, and and I say that is because uh, it is extremely developer friendly. Uh, what you see is a, a straightforward JSON object for all the configurations that you have to do, and uh, it works seamlessly with the platform. Uh, if you are in uh, Tanzu Cloud Foundry, I don't see a reason why uh, anyone would want to uh, buy expensive another third party pro product uh, for whatever reason. Uh, but it does pretty much everything uh, what most people would need. Uh, it keeps things uh, simple. Uh, we do it in a automated uh, deployment fashion. So basically everything runs through concourse. The deployment and the change of configuration to uh, Cloud Gateway is also handled through concourse. Uh, it's easy to integrate, um, uh, straightforward again. Uh, the, the configuration list is comprehensive. So it does handle a, a lot of needs uh, that most of the organization would have uh, in a production environment. Uh, all in all, uh, um, as I mentioned, uh, as of my first point, um, there is no need for another expensive product uh, doing pretty much the same thing. Uh, Partha, what's what's next? What are, what are you looking forward to do now that the the migration is complete? Um, you know, anything you wish that that you could add to, or you know, what do you see in the future? Um, yes, I think, uh, and we've been debating about this and been discussing, and I we think uh, it is also. Um, a, uh, it would be a great feature for us to have uh, validating and supporting tokens in the gateway. Uh, so basically JWD or uh, authorization tokens uh, to be part of the gateway configuration uh, for us to uh, secure it uh, much more uh, at the gateway level. And uh, I happen to have on a good authority that that's something that the Spring team is working with. So uh, hopefully you won't have to wait too much longer for that. Yep, I'm excited to see how that comes out, and uh, we'll be we'll be trying that out soon. And uh, thank you, thank you so much uh, uh, for joining us today. Uh, and if you have any specific questions, uh, feel free to talk to us in the Slack or in the uh, the breakout channel. All right, we'll see you there. Thank you. Hi there. Um, thank you so much, Parth, and uh, and. Uh, and, and Dodd, uh, for that wonderful presentation um, on AARP, we actually got to see what happens behind the scenes. Not a lot of companies are willing to, to share their transformation. Um, if you'd like to continue the conversation with them, please head over to the Q&A. Um, you should see that in the Slack channel. The link will be shared and you can continue to talk to them in a private Zoom meeting and are welcome to ask them any questions. Um, additionally, when we get back after the break, at approximately uh, 105, 105 uh, Mountain Standard Time, we'll have a tour of the modern Java platform with Bruce and James Ward. Um, this talk will give you a tour of the most important improvements in Java and why they matter and how you can take advantage of them. They also have uh, an exciting po podcast called happypathprogramming.com if you want to check that out as well. Um, and we'll see you soon after the break. Thank you. <laughs>